today. Um, and again, talking about penetrations and things that are designed holes, you know, make sure that your, your hose bib that comes out for turning on your water, any electrical that goes through your walls, assemblies, you know, get those as, as, as tight as possible. And fireplaces too are natural, you know, again, they're, it's a design hole that naturally draws. How, do you all have fireplaces? Or, um, I've seen some really, really cool in the UP, you know, that UPER ingenuity these people do some amazing things, and I have actually a bunch of pictures I wish I'd put on here, but you know, they make <coughs> plugs that they can just, when they're not using them, they stick them in there. Um, and obviously make sure your dampers are closed all the time. Um, if you can do it from the top, that's a lot better than from the bottom um, with dampers. Um, this is just a illustration, the, the bottom kit there, they make some really, really awesome permanent plastic window kits now that you can get in brown or white or whatever the color of your window is and that track stays permanently around your window frame and then there's a spline that snaps over your vinyl or plastic so you can just snap it in there and it's easy anybody can do it you know and again you don't have to spend fifteen thousand dollars to replace all your windows you can you know seal them and then add that layer of plastic and save some huge huge amounts of money and again, on installing storm windows or uh, sealing them from the inside and the outside. And then there's the, you know, obviously the drapes, the insulated blinds that you see a lot of people using now. Um, I actually met this gal, Millie Malone, I'll never forget her. She's like 75 years old in the middle of Hermanville, which is a very, very rural place. And she took and she cut styrofoam for her windows put a canvas over it and painted these beautiful portraits on it that hang on the side of her wall. And then at night, she'll take it off the wall and she'll stick it in her window. And I just thought that was the most logical, easy thing. And I'm like, gosh, really, you could sell these and just make a bajillion dollars because it was, it was something that was, again, very, very unique. And again, just by stopping that heat loss I, I, during the night. <coughs> Adding, adding insulation, you know, you can never have, I love seeing R100 ceilings and walls with these hay bales because that's, you know, super insulation. You cannot insulate enough. First, you want to stop the airflow. Um, again, cellulose in your attic is great, but if there's air being introduced into that attic, it's going to blow through and it's going to just move the heat right, right out of your house. Um, so. And there's a lot of products out there. The spray and isonine is, is very popular. There actually are some green products for that sprayed cellulose, that, sp that sprayed foam. Rigid foam board, the, you know, the dowel board, the pink board, or the blue board. My granddad, for years, cut those and stuck them around his foundation, just where the siding to that ground level is. He's like 85 years old now. Um, so I actually have been staying with him since I've been down here, and I did it for him yesterday. He's like, oh, great, I was really worried about that, you know. But it's, again, something that, you know, can save money. Crawl spaces, there's, again, with, with the energy code, there's, there's so many different techniques that we can do. And obviously in Michigan, everybody does everything differently. Um, there isn't really a standard on, gosh, should I put a vapor barrier underneath my crawl space? Should I trap that to keep that moisture down? or? You know, and there's, it's, it's always situational. There isn't one perfect way, you know, to do it. And again, just work with your contractors um, to learn what they're doing. And obviously ducts, in Michigan, it's not so much of a problem because all of our duct work is in conditioned space. If any of you have ducts that are in crawl spaces or in attic spaces, Make sure they're sealed. Make sure they're not leaking. Make sure they're super insulated because, again, you're having heat loss into those unconditioned spaces. And, you know, you always, I, there's actually some great examples of this in Thompsonville, you know, where you see all the plug caps all the way around houses where they drill and fill. Um, the weatherization department's their expertise at this. And, and there's ways to do that without, you know, you can remove a piece of siding, you know, and do it where you don't see all those caps because. You know, back in the 50s, we didn't even use insulation in our homes. So again, with this existing home market, we have to take and in, in, insulate our walls because it's never been done. Um, and there's really easy, low, expensive ways to do that. Um, and again, basements are, you know, it's like walking outside without your shoes on. Basically, if you're not insulating your basement walls, 
Um, you know, you're going to have a lot of heat loss. And it's from the inside, it's easy to do. You know, the old Michigan rock basements, you know, that's all we really have in the Upper Peninsula is, you know, it's, it's impossible. You cannot put a foam board on those rock walls. You know, but there are things you can do to super insulate them with the spray foams or, you know, build a wall out, fill it with cellulose. And then the, the, the equipment that we use, you know, we, we're, we're an Energy Star partner. We, we try and you know, obviously promote Energy Star as much as we can because it's a true way of, of reducing your cost. You know, use your programmable thermostats. Turn that furnace down when you leave to go to work for the day and your kids are at school or, you know, even at night, just a couple of degrees. It's significant amounts of money just by turning it down. And that's, you know, I always, I'm, I'm a renter. And I still do it by hand, you know, but it's, if you get that programmable thermostat, it's something that you don't have to think about anymore. And obviously maintain your equipment. It's, we always, you know, make sure you're having a, a heating contractor come over and tune up your furnace uh, every fall. Make sure that that's happening because it's, he's going to make it so it operates at the optimum efficiency. And uh, uh, change your air filters, you know, all the time. And obviously cooling, we don't do a whole lot of cooling around here, but there's, you know, just by opening your windows at night, letting that heat escape, it's an easy way to, to cool your home. Hot water heaters are huge, huge energy loss. And I heard them talking yesterday that Cherryland has a program where they turn your hot water heater down or something. I, I, I'd like to learn more about that, but I see them bringing back programmable thermostats for hot water heaters because we heat 40 gallons of hot water 24 hours a day, and the average family of four, you know, that hot water is only on for two hours a day. So if we're using natural gas, and that's, you know, maintaining that temperature, um, you know, that's a huge, huge expense. This is the second largest expense in our homes. And if you have an old hot water heater where you put your hand on the tank and you can feel heat, then you can, you know, add a blanket to it. But the new hot water heaters are built so good, they're built like a thermos, there's very little heat loss, so the, the blankets aren't necessary. But your copper tubing that comes out of them, make sure those are insulated, you know, as far as you can. Um, just with the pipe wrap, and again, this is something I show the kids, and they're like, oh my gosh, I can do that. Um, but you feel them sometimes. You know, even when you haven't been using the hot water, the hot and the cold, they're hot. And that's because heat is being lost through the top of those hot water heaters. So make sure that you can keep that heat from being lost. And again, it's just pipe insulation. You pay 99 cents for it. And, you know, it's, it's a way to save money. And also the, the maintenance for your hot water tanks, you know, there's, even if you're on municipal water, sediment comes through your water. And that'll collect at the bottom of your hot water heater. And over time, that acts as an insulation. So it makes that unit call more. So make sure there's a little valve, and it's usually about this high off the ground. So you have to hook a hose up to it, but open that valve and drain a couple gallons off of that hot water tank, you know, once or twice a year. If you're on well water, you might have to do it more. But again, that's something that's gonna make that unit last longer, and it's gonna make it operate uh, better. Um, and, and using cold water, you know, I love it. You talk to people and they're like, my grandma, she's a perfect example. She'll wash two or three shirts at a time and use super hot water. And, um, in order for hot water to perform and kill bacteria, people think a lot of this for dishes and their clothes, they think they're going to clean their clothes better by using hot water. And it's, it's simply not true. If it's maybe really greasy stuff, if you're a miner and you know, working on trucks and stuff like that. Yeah, I can see that. But if, if you know, the, the cold water detergents, even the ones that are not cold water, you do not need to use hot water to wash your clothes.